So we're giving away two tickets to the Ravens Bengals Thursday night football game in MT Bank Stadium. The rules are in the description if you want to enter to win. Super, super simple. But it seemed like the Ravens were a little jealous of that. And they wanted to do a giveaway of their own to the Dallas Cowboys in the game yesterday. But thank goodness that they didn't. They barely survived, but they survived. Team Keep It Clean, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game that we all watched yesterday. And we were all big. And we were like, okay, let's go. Let's get it, baby. And then that lead, it just started to disappear piece by piece by piece. All in the fourth quarter, too. But anyway... Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, uh, leave a like on the video, and let's just jump straight into it. The Baltimore Ravens, they were sitting at 0-2. The Dallas Cowboys were coming in at 1-1. One one. Both teams were coming off of losses in the previous week. Uh, the Ravens, they lost by three. The Dallas Cowboys, they lost by everything. Um, both teams, they lost at home games where uh, I thought both of them were going to win, but they obviously didn't. Uh, and there was a record. There were several records going into this game. Like Lamar Jackson, he's 20 and 1 versus the NFC. Dak Prescott, he's 7 and 1 coming off of a loss. And it was like, okay, so something's got to give. So, so something's got to give. Something's got to happen where one of those records ends up being broken. Thank goodness it ended up being Dak Prescott's record. Uh, and Lamar Jackson's streak versus the NFC continues to where he is 21 and one. And that's really insane when you like sit, sit there and think about it. It is crazy. Um, and Lamar Jackson, you know, before we even talk about Lamar Jackson, if we're going to talk bad about the offensive line, if you're going to talk bad about Daniel Filele, Pat McCarthy, if you're going to just talk about their struggles, let's also give them their praise when they did a much better job yesterday. So shout out to them, especially Daniel Falele. Daniel Falele has been taking a lot of heat from Baltimore Ravens fans, from media uh, over the past couple of weeks. And he has been struggling quite a bit. Um, but we got to understand this is a brand new position for Daniel Falele. Like he's a tackle. He's been a tackle all his life. And now to make that switch, that transition. And while it is only a spot over, it's completely new everything. So it's been an adjustment process. And we knew going into this season there was going to be an adjustment process, but it's been quite a, a lot of hiccups on that right side of the offensive line. But with Daniel Filele in yesterday's game against the Cowboys, he did his thing. And it was like John Harbaugh talked about it um, uh, like a day before the game. He said, oh, yeah, there might be some changes on the offensive line. We may make some little adjustments on the offensive line. And I was telling people like, hey, okay, Harbaugh's hearing us. He's listening to us. And Daniel Falele did still start, and Pat McCarry was still the starter as well. So I was like, uh, okay, so, all right. I guess no changes really then. But for the very first time making his in-season debut, Ben Cleveland, he played a little bit of right guard yesterday. And what's funny that right guard position was essential. It was crucial in both of Derrick Henry's touchdowns because both right guards, they paved the way for Derrick Henry to score. And Derrick Henry's first touchdown was right there on the goal line. He ran right behind the right guard. And who was it? It was none other than Ben Cleveland. Ben Cleveland, he cleared the way for Derrick Henry to essentially walk into the end zone. So shout out to Ben Cleveland who, hey, he's, he's starting to creep out of the doghouse just a little bit. Just a little bit. And like we talked about last week, Ben Cleveland's response to John Harbaugh, that was everything. And he responded perfectly. You cannot respond any better than that. Because we know there's animosity between the two, but the way that he responded, the way that he handled it, he handled it very maturely. He did not take any like subtle shots at John Harbaugh at all. He didn't do any like petty stuff at John Harbaugh at all. He said, hey, uh, there were a lot of injuries. I was moving around. I didn't really get the chance to play right guard like that. But he didn't say anything bad about Harbaugh, but it was important that he didn't because Harbaugh's job is in, I mean, excuse me, Ben Cleveland's job is in Harbaugh's hands. And you don't want to mess around with that. So I think that obviously helped uh, not make any animosity even more. So he got a chance to play yesterday, and it was beautiful because, again, he cleared out the way for Derrick Henry. But then back to Daniel Filele, who was the more uh, permanent right guard. Well, not permanent because he did rotate, but the, he's a starter at right guard. Um, on Derrick Henry's second touchdown run, when I saw it, it didn't even look like it was going to be a touchdown run. Derrick Henry started running, then he cut back, and then he made a couple of people miss. He started losing balance a little bit, but then he caught it, and then that was it. 
I thought it was just going to be a big game, but Derrick Henry said, no, I'm taking advantage of this. I got this. And he ended up running for a touchdown. But then I saw the replay. I saw the instant replay. And I'm pretty sure Daniel Farlele, he ended up pulling. But whatever the play was, it was number 77 that cleared out the lane. Derrick Henry ran the, through the lane that Daniel Farlele cleared out. So huge, huge shout out. To Daniel Falele. We don't want to just sit on here talking bad about, oh man, he's terrible, he's this, he's that. And then when he turns it around, crickets. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. The offensive line yesterday was a much better showing for them, but also something else that helped the offensive line out a lot quick passes. Quick passes. Not having Lamar have to hold the ball while the, these long, slow developing plays down the field. And, of course, we still want those plays, but they were getting the ball out of Lamar Jackson's hands rather quickly. And it's important that if your offensive line is struggling, that you do things to alleviate that pressure that's on them. You do things to make their job easier. You do things to build their confidence. And yesterday, in yesterday's game, Todd Munkin was doing that with the offensive line. So that was great. It, it goes hand in hand like we've been talking about for the longest. We were very, very happy to see the progress uh, with the offensive line with Todd Munkin and just how they were helping each other out. Because, again, when the offensive line does their thing, it just makes life easier for everybody. But shout out to them. Now, um, Lamar Jackson in yesterday's game – he was cruising. He was, he was cruising early on. He was chilling. Um, I think for like, was it the whole first quarter? Where he was like, he was just one for one for like 30 yards. But he, he, he was chilling early on. Um, it was just really the, the Derrick Henry show. Derrick Henry was really doing his thing. And when we look at uh, Derrick Henry's numbers, um, he, I, I said before the season started, I would expect Derrick Henry. I would not be surprised if he got like 17 rushing touchdowns. And I did not think that sounded crazy. Before, going into this game, he was averaging a touchdown a game. And I was, okay, that put him on right on pace for 17 touchdowns. I, and I know there were going to be some games where he scores multiple touchdowns. There's going to be some games where he might not score any touchdowns. But Derrick Henry, he, I think he's going to get like 17 touchdowns. Now he's above average because in week one, he got one touchdown. In week two, he got one touchdown. Like yesterday, he got two touchdowns. So Derrick Henry got four of them things. And he got uh, 100, 151 yards. Now... I told y'all John Harbaugh, when, when John Harbaugh made them comments, we didn't bring Derrick Henry in here to get 30 carries a game, da 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 I told you, don't, don't trip. Please don't trip over that. Because Harbaugh is Mr. Competitive Advantage. He don't want to give everything away to everybody. He don't want to say out loud what his intentions are and what he plans to do or not to do with a player. I told everybody, don't trip. Derrick Henry going to get his. This game, he had 25 carries. See? See, you, 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 Harbaugh is just trolling, man. Harbaugh is the ultimate troll. So that's why it's important to so certain things that he says. You could you can tell when he's trolling. He's been around here since 2008. We all know Harbaugh. Y'all all know Harbaugh. We know how Harbaugh is. So, but yeah, it was nice to see Derrick Henry just really get loose um, in yesterday's game. Somebody else who got loose in yesterday's game, back to Lamar Jackson. He went 12 for 15. For 182 yards, and, and I like how for a lot of the his yards, it was just the receivers. They they were going to work. They were going to work. Like shout out to Nelson Act. Like, but the, the receivers they didn't get much action now. But because the the receiver with the most catches were obviously Zay Flowers because he always got the most catches. But also Rashad Bateman. They both had three catches each. So Zay Flowers had three catches for 20 yards. So he didn't really get to do much. He did come up in a clutch. On that third down play where uh, Ravens needed it. And Zay Flat, he came through. He came through. And then, of course, Lamar Jackson, he ended up sealing the deal. So, shout out to Lamar for a closing shop. Uh, and Rashad Bateman, he had three catches for 28 yards. And it was very, very nice to see him get in the end zone. There's this one pass when Lamar, and it's the way that Lamar Jackson, he'll sort of like flick his wrist. And it's a pass that every time you see Lamar Jackson throw it like that, you could tell it's, it's going to be a layup play. Every time he throws it like that. I, I don't even know exactly how to explain it, but it's the way that he threw it when he threw it to Rashad Bateman in the end zone. Whenever he throws it like that, it's going to be a good play because there's somebody that's right there. He sees them, they open, and boom, he, he hits them every time. But it was nice. It was very, very – I was so happy to, 
to see Rashad Bateman uh, score yesterday. He needed it. He needed it. It, it, it was great. Um, back to Lamar Jackson. He also scored uh, yesterday, too. He scored with the pass to Rashad Bateman, scored on the ground. And he had, like, a sneaky uh, 87 yards rush. I didn't even realize he had that much yards running the ball. But, again, Lamar said it. Like, hey, he said it since week one. Because after that game, he had, like, over 100 yards rushing. People are like, hey, what are you doing? Da -da -da, what's going on? You think you're going to be the last? All that stuff. You know, you know how it goes. But he said, I am going to do what it takes to win. I don't regret running. And he even went head up with people. I don't regret dropping that shoulder. He said he is going to do whatever it takes to win the football games. And I love it. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. And continuing with the rushing game, um, Justice Hill. New money, Justice Hill. New contract, Justice Hill. He was running like he got some new money. Justice Hill doing his thing. You know, I, and I, what we talked about when he got his deal, you can't talk bad about that Justice, Justice Hill deal. You can't. There, there's nothing bad about that Justice Hill deal. Nothing. And he is not to the people, oh, he's just a special team. No, no. Justice Hill is out there a lot. He's out there in the run game, out there in the pass game, pass protection, catching the ball. He's doing a lot of different things for the Baltimore Ravens. So Justice Hill should be, continue to be appreciated. So shout out to him because uh, he had five carries for 33 yards. Now, um, back to the receivers. They, uh, it's kind of a, it, it was, it was like a, a quiet, loud day for Because again, Nelson Aguilar, he had that quick pass. Lamar snapped it, threw it to Nelson Aguilar. Nelson Aguilar made that one man miss and he took off. They need to update his speed in Madden. I don't know what his speed in Madden is because I ain't played Madden in a little while. But whatever his speed is, you need to update it, Madden, get it right. But that was the last pass that Nelson Aguilar saw. Charlie Kohler, he had one catch for 30 yards. Correct. Yesterday in the passing game, it was all about efficiency. It's like, look, we ain't going to get many passes. Throwing our way today. Running game was working. And again, go with what works. If something's working, keep going at it. And the Ravens, they did that a lot yesterday. But we're going to talk about how they could have done it a bit more. But yesterday, again, Charlie Kohler had the one catch for 30 yards. And Charlie Kohler, he caught the ball, just turned up field. And it was a big day for Charlie Kohler yesterday because they were running the ball a lot. Charlie Kohler, the, the blocking tight end for the Baltimore Ravens. Mark Andrews was not on the field nearly as much. I think he was the tight end with the least amount of snaps. But Charlie Kohler, like, when they want to run the ball, they say, 88, come here. Come here. Hey, go block. I know you got us. So Charlie Kohler, like, it, he's – I really uh, appreciate how with him, um, it's been patience. It's been a lot of patience. He, got, of course, got drafted with um, Isaiah Likely, but they got drafted, and Mark Andrews was already still here. He was the tight end of this system. Uh, but Charlie Kohler has seen Mark Andrews continue to do his thing. Um, I guess an eyelash went in my eye. It's really annoying. But he's watched... Charlie, uh, excuse me, he watched Mark Andrews do his thing. He's watched Isaiah Likely emerge. And he's just been sitting there waiting. Just waiting, 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 waiting. And then now this year, he's been getting a lot more opportunities, been getting a lot more snaps. So that's cool uh, to see it for him. Um, Derrick Henry, he got involved in a passing game too. He had one catch, but it went for 23 yards. They involved him. It was a screenplay. So that's what I'm talking about, man. This is, and Ravens were doing a lot of it early on in the game yesterday being unpredictable and we loved it. it it just made us so so happy um justice hill two catches for 21 yards that's that's right on par justice Hill always getting them and there was one play where lamar he was holding it he was looking for somebody holding it looking for somebody and then that that pocket started crashing in lamar checked down to justice hill and that's been something over the past two well not the past two years but last year and this year something that we've I really appreciate it about the Baltimore Ravens offense, Lamar Jackson, Todd Munkin. And it's the fact that they have really, and it's something that we've been wanting them to do for years, especially on the Greg Roman's offense, but they didn't really do it. It's taking the check downs, taking the check downs because the check down can, it can save your life. It really can. It, and it's so simple, but it can be very, very effective. And they have really been incorporating them check downs a lot and they make the world of a difference. Um, Isaiah likely had one catch for four yards. Uh, Mark Andrews, he didn't have any catches, but he had one target, but that was it. That was it. So the past game, like, again, all about efficiency. All about efficiency. Not many opportunities because, again, 12 completions. But Derrick Henry, he had 25. And Harbaugh said that too. And that's something I, I agree with what Harbaugh said. He said, look, 
they're going to be games when Derrick Henry, he has a bunch of, but this other player, he might not have many catches. Or this player might not have many catches. Or this player may have a, this, he, he was just talking about saying, like, look, there's going to be games where this player goes off, but that player doesn't. And that's fine. <clears throat> that's fine. The most important thing is that the Ravens, they score more points than the opposing team. But speaking of the Baltimore Ravens offense, they jumped out. 28-6. Big lead. Let's get it, baby. And then they said, oh, okay, that's cool. Now, there's more context to it than just, oh, they, they just they gave up the big lead. Because they had the big lead. And I remember we were having conversations in the live stream like, hmm, should the Baltimore Ravens, uh, if they score again, uh, should they sit Lamar? or let? And I was saying, hey, look, when it was 28-6, I said, if they score again, field goal or touchdown, then I feel like they could sit Lamar. I, f I felt like it, but boy, my, my mind was not, it was not working correctly yesterday because I got I had to say, hold up. These are the Baltimore Ravens now. These are the Ravens. They, they historically like to give up leads, especially in the fourth quarter. And what changed a lot in yesterday's game, oh, the penalty. Oh, my goodness. What is going on with the penalties against the Ravens? It, it's like been really, really bad, outrageously bad. The Dak Prescott, that play where he was, it was an end zone. And he that illegal forward pass. Cause he threw it to a lineman. He threw that that should have been a safety. That should have been a safety. And, and they said, oh no, that's fine. Oh, it's okay. And um there was a, a oh, there was a, a they called it what they call it? They call it a illegal contact, I think, on Marcus Williams. When in slow motion it ain't even look like nothing. And you know slow motion slows it down even more, so it looks worse in slow motion. But in regular it was nothing. They call that on Marcus Williams. Oh, the rough in the pass that they caught on Adafi Elwes. What? What is this? And it's just, it's been crazy to see the, the, the calls that have been going against the Ravens. And we hate to, to, to get on that. We hate to, like, have to talk. About, but it's something that it has been, like, outrageously bad. It's been, like, on a whole nother level for these first three games alone. So if it's been like, and these calls, the thing about these calls is what makes it very scary because Ravens still have, what, uh, 14 games left? What makes it very scary, there have been significant calls in every single one of the Baltimore Ravens games, game-changing calls in every single one of the Baltimore Ravens games. Game-changing calls. Calls that literally change everything like that. They've been huge. So, I don't know what it is, and, and, it's, and, it, and it's, it's going around the league, too, but we obviously watch all the Baltimore Ravens stuff, but it has been wildly in other teams' favor, for sure. I, I don't know what it is. But anyway, back to the lead. Um, Ravens, when, when they jumped out, 28-6, and I, I said, hey, if they score again, Lamar could chill, whether field goal or a touchdown. Um, so they lined up Justin Tucker for a 46-yard field goal in a dome, no wind, no, no sleet, no snow, no 46-yard Justin Tucker, most accurate kick in, and he missed it. He missed it. I don't know what's happening with JT, man. I really don't. It's the craziest thing to watch. After what we've seen from him for the majority of his career. Like we are just losing confidence, man. Losing confidence in JT. It's like before with uh, with Justin Tucker, even this year, it's like, oh, beyond 50. Oh, no, oh, this might not be so good. And he's been missing. But this one was under 50. Oh, 46 yards. I still didn't feel confident in, in Justin Tucker to make it. And he missed. And... I don't know what it is. I have no clue what is going on. Like, how does he just, has he just been missing? How? So, but when we talk about the lead, the Ravens giving up the lead, that's part of it. They were conservative a bit, but there were some other things, some other factors that played into that uh, as well. Um, there was the penalties as well that did not help anything. Um, but yeah, then... And they just weren't scoring either at all after that. There was the onside kick. Zay Flowers fumbled. I said, oh, man, here we go. When they got that onside kick, I said, oh, boy, yikes. 
Yikes. That was, that was bad. And it's like somebody with some of the best hands on a the team. They just dropped that. It's like, oof, yikes. But um, yeah, man. So Ravens, they they gave up a lead. They gave up the lead. Dallas Cowboys scored. They went for two and get it. Then Dallas Cowboys got the ball back. They scored again. They scored it. And then they just kept creeping back. But the just when the Baltimore Ravens needed something to put the Dallas Cowboys away when they were down three, they they literally came all the way back from being down 28-6, all in the fourth quarter. And I, I will say this about Dak Prescott. Those were not empty calories at all. They weren't because it was in a comeback effort. Um, those were real yards, real stats, real touchdowns. And it was in a comeback effort because they were trying to win a game. And they came close. They, they came really close. But, again, thank you for Lamar for sealing the deal. We're getting ready to talk about the Baltimore Ravens defense. But before we do, let's hear a word from our sponsor. I know we all looking for even more ways to keep it clean, right? Well, let me introduce you to Mando. Mando is a whole body deodorant literally for everywhere. Your neck, your back, your armpits, your legs, your feet, and anywhere where the sun don't shine. We said they're everywhere, right? Because, unfortunately, body odor doesn't just stay in one place. But, fortunately, Mando doesn't either. Because it's for everywhere. Here's Mando's 4-in-1 Acidified Cleansing Bar. It's a 5-ounce bar that does the work of shampoo, face wash, body wash, and deodorant. It's clinically proven to control odor for 24 hours. And it comes in three cologne quality scents. Mount Fuji is fresh and woodsy. Bourbon leather is sweet and sophisticated. And Pro Sport is clean and citrusy. Now here's my personal favorite for Mando, their bourbon leather body wash. Every time I use it, it got me feeling like a brand new man. And then it keeps me smelling really good too. So that's a nice bonus. But Mando's whole body deodorant is powerful enough for the toughest body odor, but gentle enough to use everywhere. Allowing you to put Mando on those special somewheres without any worry because Mando is aluminum free, baking soda free, cruelty free, dye free, and it's vegan. But how can you get your hands on it? Well, I'm getting ready to tell you. Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice. My choices ended up being the deodorant wipes and my personal favorite again, the body wash. And another bonus, you get free shipping. Luckily, I have a discount code to help you get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack. Use code engraven at shopmando.com. S H O P M A N D O.com. Now, with this Baltimore Ravens defense, Super Duper Kyle is back in the building. He looked himself again. He looked healthy. Uh, he looked just. Kyle Hamilton was all over the place. And it was like, oh, yeah, there he goes. He's back. Almost got a sack, too. But Dak Prescott, shout out to Dak Prescott. He got that ball out. Just in time before his knees hit the ground But Super Duper Kyle He was all over it And also um, Super Duper Kyle 2.0 Because that is uh, Kyle Vanoy Because again I think it's two weeks in a row He got two sacks This man has been doing his thing He can't even see He got an eye He can't even see And he getting sacks man Every week we saying the same thing So shout out to him man I, I, I love seeing the Baltimore Ravens uh, Do their thing um, also, I, I, I love how uh, their pass rush, the Baltimore Ravens pass rush, and it's something that we were concerned about going into this year. We talked about how David Clowney left, Adafi Away was a question mark, David Ajabo, his health was a question mark, uh, Kyle Vannoy, could he continue where he, pick, where he, where he was left, could he, could he pick up where he left off last season? There's just a lot of question marks with the Baltimore Ravens pass rush. Got Tavius Robinson, of course, Matt Abike with him. Now, hey, how you follow up that year? Matt BK has been balling. It don't always show, like, on a stat sheet, but when you watch, Matt BK has been balling. So, these, oh, Travis Jones, too. Travis Jones been killing it, too, man. So, these Baltimore Ravens, their defense, their pass rush. <laughs> None of them even, but their pass rush has been killing it. Um, so, shout out to, to all of them, man. Roquan Smith. It ain't been pretty. First game was like, okay, it's the Chiefs. Maybe he just he just struggling against who do, who doesn't struggle against the Chiefs? Okay, cool. Second game against the Raiders, he just no, he just did not look good. He just looked sluggish. Then this game too, he just he he looks like I don't want to say out of shape, but he just he doesn't look good right now, man. Roquan Smith is not looking good right now, in my opinion. Um, he just struggling. It, it, see, he's like I say, he seems sluggish. Um, seem I don't want to say lethargic, but he just 
I don't know. He just been struggling, man. Trent Simpson has looked good though. So shout out to Trent Simpson, but Roquan Smith, it, it has not been pretty at all. Um, there were a couple passes yesterday too. Exactly, I think where um Dak Prescott he threw in Roquan Smith was in the passing lane, but and, and he's a linebacker and he's not the the most athletic linebacker. He don't know he no Fred Warner nothing like that. But he um Roquan was in a passing lane and Dak Prescott threw it right over him. Roquan said, "Ooh," he said, "Ooh." But he, he couldn't reach up and swat the ball down. And again, Dak Prescott put enough touch on it too. But he he knew where to go and where to throw the ball, who to throw the ball over. Um, because Roquan Smith just couldn't do it. And then you see Roquan Smith in pass coverage, and, and it just it's just been rough, man. It's been it's been rough watching Roquan Smith this year. So I don't know, man. I think he need to go on that um that Ray Lewis that Ray, Ray Lewis twenty twelve diet in the beginning of the season, <laughs> not when he came back from that injury. That's what it seemed like he might be on that. But he need to go on that Ray Lewis diet at the, from the beginning of the twenty twelve season. Remember when Ray Lewis he came into the season and he was all skinny and stuff. He was like, oh, I got to be able to keep up with these tight ends. It's a new passing league and these tight ends they faster than ever. So I, I shared a lot of weight. And they, I remember they showed a, a side by side comparison uh, with him because we played the Bengals in week one. I think it was Monday Night Football. Played the Bengals in week one. I think the first play of the game was that bomb from Joe Flacco to Torrey Smith. But anyway, they were showing a graphic of Ray Lewis in that game side by side from the previous year. And it was like, oh, he lost a lot of weight. Now, his tackling wasn't the best when he lost all that weight. But he did have more speed to keep up. So, I, 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 I don't know, man. I'm, I'm no medical expert. I'm no doctor, anything like that. But my assessment as just somebody who watches the Baltimore Ravens, it's, it seems, I don't know if Roquan is overweight. It, he just seems a, a, a little sluggish, a little sluggish. And it's like, it's, it's a bit concerning. It is. Because um, it's just Roquan Smith. So we'll see uh, how that goes moving forward. Um, but yeah, it. it, it like, oof. Now, a uh, bright spot on the defense yesterday, Nate Wiggins. Well, it, it, it was up and down. Uh, with Nate Wiggins, that was his first major action of the year. He played a little bit, a tiny bit. Um, in the Chiefs game, but he obviously didn't play last week against the Raiders after the car accident, but he was back, and he was playing. He, the way he started off, because they they had him at outside corner, they had Marlon Humphrey in the slot a lot, and they had uh, Brandon Stevens at the other outside corner. Uh, CeeDee Lamb was moving around a lot. CeeDee Lamb was doing his thing, but there was a play, and I, and I love that, that mental fortitude from Nate Wiggins. There was a play, and I love how Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb do this. Uh, Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb will release after Dak Prescott snaps the ball, but CeeDee Lamb will release, and he'll just he'll get just a crease, just a small crease on his defender, on his on the cornerback covering him, and Dak Prescott will get it right to him, and then let CD break the tackle and let CD do his thing. They do it all the time. They tried it in yesterday's game. Uh, Nate Wiggins was on CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb, he released, and he got off the line, and he just he got it open, him, and he caught the ball, and Nate Wiggins was tackling him, almost knocked the ball out. Almost knocked the ball out. See, he lost it a little bit, but then he, he held on to it. I know he was like, whew, thank goodness I didn't lose this ball. Literally a couple of plays, just a couple, same drive. Literally a couple of plays later. Same thing, same sort of play, same release, same crease, still against Nate Wiggins. Dak Prescott to CeeDee Lamb, same thing. CeeDee Lamb got a little crease. Dak Prescott got it to him. He caught it. Nate Wiggins, pop, knocked the ball out, fumble. Ravens recover. I love that, man. You got to play that rookie. Got to play the rookie. I'm glad he was out there. I'm glad he was going against one of the best uh, receivers in the league. Now, he did give up a big pass interference. Well, he just, he ain't, it was, and it was a legitimate pass interference call. Um, but he gave a big pass interference, but he, he didn't get his head turned around. Um, that's why. But, uh, but it got negated because Dallas Cowboys, they were holding. So I was like, oh, thank goodness, because I was wondering, like, the, the, the refs, they were talking for a while. I'm like, what's going on? Like, I'm, it's clear that that's passing interference. It's clear as day that that's P.I. But then they were like, oh, holding on the offense. I said, oh, man, thank goodness. But Nate Wiggins, um, up and down game. There was a big, uh, yeah, there's not a big catch, but it was a good enough catch that he did give up to um, C.D. Land where he just, he was too fast for himself. He literally, like, ran past C.D. Land. I think it was C.D. Lamb, but he ran past. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was C.D. Lamb, but he ran past him. He ended up running out of bounds and coming back in bounds on C.D. Lamb caught. But it was um, Nate Wiggins. He just, the experience. All, it's all about experience now, moving forward for Nate Wiggins. He's only going to get better, too. But that was a nice, like, real debut for Nate Wiggins. Against the Chiefs, that really was no debut. He was hardly out there. But this game, yeah, he was out there a lot, and we, we, we loved it, man. We loved seeing it. Now, um, Baltimore Ravens defense. 
they have been doing this thing. And again, with Zach Orr, he's new. I told you, we, we, we can't judge him off for of one game. Can't judge him off for of two. I don't even feel like we could judge him off for of three. I know a lot of people have been judging him off for of three, but I say like six, seven games. Let's see. Let's see. What the Baltimore Ravens defense has been doing, um, they've been starting off strong. They've been starting these games off strong, getting sacks, getting stops, forcing punts, sometimes turnovers, but I think, oh, yeah, we got to turn over this game too. So they've been doing their thing. But as the game goes on, they've been giving it up. They've been giving up the points. They've been giving up the yards. They've been giving up the catches. So I think it was Zach Oil. Oh, we got to just work on some maybe second-half adjustments. And I know there's been times, hey, the Ravens offense, they ain't been helping y'all out as much as they should. So some of it is on them too. But the, with the defense, we got to work on the second half adjustments for sure. I, I think that would be, be the biggest, um, biggest critique that I would have right now for Baltimore Ravens defense. Because teams, they're making adjustments to Ravens defense, but Ravens defense is not making adjustments to them. And to uh, to give up again, they went from we had twenty eight, so it was twenty eight twenty five. So to give up uh, what nineteen points in the fourth quarter? In the fourth quarter, like you knew they had to score. Like that's a lot to give up that many in the fourth quarter. And you, they, they were obviously passing a lot. They did mix in some running out too, which I respect it. But yeah, that's that's an issue. That, that, that's a big issue um, You want Of course if, if you jump out to a 28-6 lead You want to be able to be Alright we'll, we'll run the ball Something drain the clock But You also want to still put up points too So th this, this goes on both parties This goes on both sides uh, You want to be able to still score some points Run the score up uh, But then at the same time You want to be able to rely on your defense Like oh y'all hold it down Y'all done held it down all game Hold it down just a little bit more So Those are some issues And I, and I guess that's just a Baltimore Ravens thing In general They take their foot off the gas both on offense and on defense. So, yeah. But Baltimore Ravens got the win, and they escape out of there at one and two. On to the Buffalo Bills.